The mask hadn't moved an inch at all. He had not once lost his effortless charm or forbearance. This week, in response to the first of many inquiries concerning their connection that dominated the lead-up to this year's Super Bowl in Sin City, Travis Kelsey began by talking about Taylor Swift. His farewell speech to his Kansas City Chiefs colleagues on Saturday night inspired so many that it brought some to tears. And then it was Kelsey's chance to lose it on the grandest platform of all, in what was arguably the largest Super Bowl ever. Swift was in the stands and, for once, she was in the shade, but there was no blubbing. With his team behind the San Francisco 49ers in the Las Vegas halftime hour, Kelsey yelled at Chiefs head coach Andy Reid. The 65-year-old needed to be pulled away after he almost knocked him off his feet. It was startling, and it had the potential to be the iconic photo of a night in which Kansas City fell apart and missed an opportunity to create history. Rather, as the evening drew in over Sin City, Kelsey was holding the Vince Lombardi trophy and yelling three less offensive words, cheers to Las Vegas. Since this squad is unique. Based on a fierce defensive posture. And captained by an unmatched quarterback, a man endowed with extraordinary talent but, perhaps more importantly, a will to live even in the face of failure. Patrick Mahomes is the person Kansas City looks to when things go tough. He does not disappoint them. Not even when his offense acts up, which it did once more on Sunday. Not even after the Chiefs in Sin City were threatened with strangulation by San Francisco. Not even following four hours of combat. The quarterback repeatedly brought his team back into the contest. After a fierce battle that ended in overtime, he led them down the field and located Mechol Hardman to open another chapter in history. Shortly after, Mahomes succumbed to emotion as well, collapsing to the ground and lying on his back. Only the Chiefs, their second in back-to-back -back seasons, have won a Super Bowl in five years under his leadership. In 20 years, no team has won consecutive titles. Without a doubt, this is a dynasty. To think that following a typical season of hardship and turmoil, these Chiefs were written off. On Sunday, the defense gave Mahomes the platform to pull Kansas City to victory by preventing the foundations from collapsing. What an incredible conclusion to an incredible season, determined once more by a truly exceptional player. Only three quarterbacks, including Mahomes, have won three titles in their first seven seasons. Now, only five coaches have won three or more Super Bowls, including Reed. Even a bump from Kelsey wouldn't be able to derail him. But San Francisco will suffer greatly from this. They were within striking distance of glory in a Super Bowl against this club, not for the first time. They had experienced late-life heartbreak before. They had been waiting for a title for 20 years. It will take some time to get over this one. The Brock Purdy narrative has no happy ending. Christian McCaffrey ran non-stop but received no recognition for it. Despite scoring one touchdown and making another, Jawan Jennings was ultimately unsuccessful. In three Super Bowls, Kyle Shanahan has now allowed three double-digit leads to evaporate as both a head coach and a coordinator. Is Las Vegas a worse place to be after a loss such as this one? Is there anywhere better than the Strip to celebrate a victory like this? These Chiefs players and their families are in for a long night. Swift landed at approximately 1 p.m. local time. Her trip from a Tokyo stage to a Las Vegas suite had involved a detour into Los Angeles and a jab at Donald Trump. But beyond that? Very easy on the pain. Vegas was ready for 330,000 more visitors, one more would not pose a problem. A few hours before kickoff, Supporters were still checking into hotels after pouring into the city over a week earlier. By then, the strip was at a standstill, and blackjack dealers were dressed in football uniforms. Since walking was a faster way to get about, thousands of spectators poured out of the Mandalay Bay Casino, down onto the underpass, into the bright sunshine, and up the hill toward Allegiant Stadium. Paving the path? A few desperate fans seeking the hottest ticket in town, 
the lowest seat on one resale site was $9,000 on game day, together with Jehovah's Witnesses, who believe that there is always time for redemption in Vegas. The stadium was just a short stroll from the strip. Keeping immortality and the Chiefs apart at kickoff? One more stride. In 2019, Reed, Mahomes, Kelsey, and company finally won a second championship after 50 years of waiting. They embarked on a long journey with the goal of reaching dynasty. The ones who lost their lives that day? San Francisco. The players for Shanahan came here intending to exact revenge. They enjoyed greater support in the stands and started as minor favorites in the betting. But what was the Chiefs' message, as expressed by Chris Jones in a pre-game commercial? We're not done yet. The tackle's face was filled with tears during the playing of the national anthem. A few minutes later, Christian McCaffrey lost possession of the ball as Kansas City scored the opening touchdown. However, San Francisco's defense quickly established some ground rules of its own, Nick Boza and company surrounded Kansas City, and Chase Young sacked Mahomes, setting the tone for this Super Bowl. There are two formidable defenses that put up obstacles almost everywhere. The reigning champions were only allowed 16 yards and one first down on their opening two possessions. Despite having greater early luck, San Francisco required a Super Bowl record-setting 55-yard field goal from Jake Moody to take the lead in the second quarter. The Chiefs appeared ready to quickly eliminate that lead. Unfortunately, just as their offensive was about to click, Isaiah Pacheco mishandled the ball. And for some, that proved to be too much, after being substituted in a game where the star tight end had only mustered one yard and one reception, Kelsey lost it. Swift, however, quickly downed her beer. A few minutes later, Purdy found Jennings, who threw a bold lateral to McCaffrey in space, and she should have raised a glass. From here on out, nobody was going to stop him. Although Shanahan is more knowledgeable than anyone else about how easily leads can be lost in this game, that score placed San Francisco solidly in control. Kansas City has overcome a 10-point deficit in each of its last three Super Bowl victories, including two against the Eagles and one against the 49ers. Here, the Chiefs' offense faltered and quarterback Patrick Mahomes struggled to keep his head above water, so there were little signs of an imminent return. Before Usher's 13-minute concert allowed the Chiefs some extra time to collect themselves, Harris and Butker's field goal just before halftime did pull the reigning champions within a score. It didn't seem to have much of an impact, on Kansas City's first possession of the third quarter, Mahomes threw his first interception and Pacheco mishandled the ball. The only thing that can save Reed? The Chiefs' defense was holding his team in the contest, in the second half, San Francisco managed just a total of minus two yards on its first three drives. Additionally, Kansas City gave the offense additional opportunities to succeed with each forced punt. Mahomes started doing it on his own. The quarterback fumbled for a handful of first downs, which allowed Butker to beat Moody's record by bringing the Chiefs to within four points from 57 yards. However, even he was unable to produce a game-changing play like the mishandled punt that put Kansas City in the red zone and gave them the lead after one play. Ray Ray McLeod III labored to collect the loose ball after it unintentionally clipped Daryl Luter's foot. Following a play by Kansas City, Mahomes connected with Marquez Valdez-Scantling in the end zone. That might have been fatal for San Francisco. Rather, the Niners advanced quickly to the opposite end and Shanahan made the decision to go for six even though the team was well inside the field goal zone. On fourth down, he took a risk, and it paid off when Purdy located Jennings in the end zone. Shortly after, Butker was able to tie the score with a field goal, exposing the price of Moody's inability to add the extra point. When Moody's fearless field goal with 153 left out San Francisco ahead again, it was the turning point in his career. The problem? Mahomes had more than enough time to take Kansas City back down the field after that. Finally, with six seconds remaining, the quarterback hit Kelsey in the end zone with a pass. Not quite done. Objective of the field. Gradually. 
After the 49ers decided to take the ball, Purdy was given an early respite thanks to a penalty. More McCaffrey genius moved San Francisco down the field on the second try before Moody booted a field goal. Kansas City's approach at that time was straightforward, a touchdown and they were the Super Bowl champions again. Mahomes faced third down twice. He made the play twice. Then he found his man in the red zone. Regarding Kelsey, this third Super Bowl triumph solidifies his status as one of the game's greatest players. Coach Reed, unlike the hordes of preachers who will line the strip as he celebrates more glory at the end of this first Super Bowl in Sin City, quickly extended forgiveness for his momentary mutiny.